blessing to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's so good to see our family. Uh, we, we've been praying for you. We just know that through the midst of all the challenges, God is always there. Amen. And we're so glad that we can be back together. We're also praying. I talked with Sister uh, Shirley, and she was telling me uh, uh, the situation with the off and on swapping of the family. Let's keep her in prayer. And let's just pray for each other. I believe this is a time for prayer. What do you say? Amen. Now, if we pray, do things happen when we pray? Yes. It does. And so when they had a little button that a person put on to try to help a person to see the importance of prayer, and the button was called PUSH. Of course, it was an acronym. Mm -hmm. P, pray. pray. U, until. S, something. And H, happens. In other words, push your prayers through. Pray until something it happens. happens. We have some tremendous things to study this morning. I'm ready to study. Are you ready to study? Amen. You brought your Bibles? Yes. Let's turn to the book of Matthew 24. We Can have I say a, one other thing yes, real quick? Yes, yes, yes. I had to go to Bristol to the doctor yesterday. This class is called what? BTI. BTI. I've always had a habit. I used to ride with my dad in trucks growing up all the time. Yes. And I'd always look at the habit, you know, what the name of the company Yes. I passed the truck yesterday. It's your truck. B T I. Praise the Lord. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Is it? That's our truck. Is it? That's what we need to be doing. Going down that road. Praise God. And you see, that's what we need to be doing. Though you see how, as we study it like this, is what you see in the week does it get into your mind? Yes. When you see the news, you think about this church. You think about class. When you see what we're doing, it reminds us of what we're doing. That's what it should be. When we come to church, it should energize us. It should encourage us. It should make us feel like I don't want to stop coming. I want to keep coming and bring other people. Uh, but as this develops, we see that God wants to do something first with them. Now, Matthew 24, let's turn there quickly. Matthew 24, we have uh, some, some beautiful grounds to cover this morning. We're going to Matthew 24. Now, here's a statement that we were looking at in our last sessions uh, in coming events class, but we moved into another section. But we want to look at this quotation again. Let me see if I can... Okay, that's good. Let's read this again. Heavenly Father, please anoint your words as we've opened it. We need you, dear God, as we study this most wonderful prophecy this morning. Abide with us, we pray, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Evangelism 17, we know by memory now. Bob is putting up here so we can warm it up together. As, as we read, we'll warm up our minds. What does this say? It says, Evangelistic work. Doing what? Opening, opening the scriptures, the scriptures to others. Doing what? Warning men and women of what is coming upon the world is to occupy more and still more of the time of God's servants. This is how we should be spending our time. We talk to someone we love, we speak, speak to them, and in the back of our mind, though, we're not just thinking, oh, we're having a good time, let's visit. You know what we're thinking? How can we take this conversation around to Jesus. Mm -hmm. How can we bring it to the Bible? So someone talks about, man, can you believe it? this person got sick? You think in your mind, where's the door? And you're saying, yes, you're praying for them. You care about them. You're thinking about that. But beneath that, you're looking for an opportunity as a Bible worker, as a missionary, to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ, to show what is coming upon the earth. And so as they say something like that, you watch, yes. You show your empathy, your care, your interest. You show them that Jesus can help, and then you say, and this is exactly what Jesus told us about. <laughs> when I sit next to someone on a plane, and then they're in a dangerous position. <laughs> if I sit next to someone in the, in the store in a dangerous position, we start talking long enough, and there's enough time in a situation, we should be planting seeds. This week, think about it. Whether you're at the gas station, whether you're at the have a book, whether you're in some uh, 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 business, place of business, whether you're with your family or your friends, we've got to take what we're studying and look for opportunities to share them. Now, can you share it all at once? No. no. Should you try to immediately bring back, you're going to church on the wrong day, this, 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 this. No, 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 no. Just immediately, little by little, plant the seed. And this is what God wants to happen. But in order to do that, we have to become intelligent to what's coming and see its link or connection to the plan of redemption. redemption. That's the greatest truth that we're studying. Now, you're going to Matthew 24. Now, if we're going to show what's coming upon the earth, are people interested in what's coming, yes or no? Oh, yes. Now, what politically is on people's mind right now? If you've been, yeah, it's election. flowing all through the news. What's politically? What's that? The election. Elections, politically on people's mind. There's something even more pressing than the elections right now, politically on someone's mind. 
There's something even more pressing than that. The Somebody has just died. Oh. An icon in the Supreme Court has just died. Who am I talking about? That's right. Now, prior to this time, most people didn't even really know what her name was. <laughs> We said, I said, I remember what you said last week. Yes. And that's the Catholic. Yes. That's right, my sister. This is so important. So she, she passed on the scene. Uh, I mean, keep the rest of my time here. But she passed off the scene next. I'm saying, this is 2020 is no what? Ordinary year. This is serious. She passed off the scene of action. And she says something before she dies. She says something. She was about 87. She said something before she died, we'll come to her a little later. But as that happened, what now is on people's mind, though? What are the Republican and Democrats fighting about right now? We need to replace her. We need to replace her. Now, the Democrats don't want her to be replaced right now. They want to wait until the next what? Election. Now, why is that so? They are hoping that Joe Biden would win, and then another type of person would sit on the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But the Republicans are pushing that what? Let's replace her now. now. We can't wait. Now, never mind that many of the Republicans have said before, we don't want that to happen. They said in 2016, they're all. I mean, one after one. I mean, I don't know how you can look in your own face and look at that. But you'll find out that neither Democrat or Republican really understand what's going on. Mm -mm. I'm not a Democrat. Mm -hmm. No, sir. I'm not a Republican. No, man. <laughs> I'm more intelligent than either that. You see, there's no party that can help us but Jesus Christ. Amen. We'll come to that a little later. But, so, not even dealing with politics. I'm not for politics. I'm not a student of politics nor a son of politics. But I am a child of prophecy. Amen. And prophecy tells us that what's happening now is prophetic. Mm -hmm. It's prophetic. My hair stands up when I think of what's going on right now. This is some tremendous. If my teacher was alive today, oh, you couldn't keep him see it. My, his voice would be up so loud, trying to explain to you what's going on. You could not contain yourself. Now, when you understand that 2020 is no ordinary year, it says we've run out of names for the what? 2020. 20, Atlanta Harry Gainesy. I'm coming back to you. No, you don't, I'm coming back to, to, to uh, Sister Ruth. I'm coming back to you. Yeah. But this says we've run out of names for the 2020 Atlanta Harry Gainesy season. Does this happen every year, yes or no? No. no. This has only happened one other time in history in America where we have run out of names for hurricanes. Why do we run out of names? What's that telling us? That's telling us that there's more hurricanes that has happened this season than in any other time that we have experienced hurricanes. Mm -hmm. Have they started going to different names already? Yes. They already started going in. It would be amazing if they ran out of Greek now. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it says we run out of names for the 2020 Atlanta hurricane season. It says, look at that, the, all the homes mm -hmm. and the devastation. We have seen so many hurricanes in what? 2020. I guess this is no ordinary year. It says that we have exhausted our supply of names and had to start using the Greek alphabet. While this damage from Hurricane Laura had yet to even be cleaned up. In other words, they can't even clean up before another one shows up. Before another one shows up. And at the same time, while the storms are terrible, what's going on in the political world? It's terrible. Mm -hmm. The same time all this is going on, they said there have been so many hurricanes that we've almost right, this already happened. We look at this, it says, think 2020's disasters are wild, experts see what? Worse. Worse. Where? In other words, 2020 is not the end, it is only the beginning. It's going to get worse and worse. Does the Bible say so, yes or no? Yes. We will come in the Bible and show you a little bit later on. It says it's going to get worse and worse. It starts going through and showing the fire is in one place, the floods. Now you have fires over here, floods over here, hurricanes over here, political people over here, damage and pandemic over here. At what point will it be too much for America to deal with? Mm -hmm. At what point will it be too much for the economy and for the brains that are trying to run this government? But it's leading somewhere. It says Satan will bring what? Disease, Disease and disaster. Has this happened already? Yes. Even now he is at work. It says in accidents and calamities by... Sea and by land. land. Hurricanes and earthquakes and great conflagrations. What are flag conflagrations? Fire. Large fires. In fierce tornadoes, terrific hailstorms, in tempests, floods, cyclones. Have we seen those? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, so I know y'all have been praying. Praise God that we got that bridge fixed. That yesterday, those last few days, those floods came up so high, but it didn't come near our bridge. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! If we was able to, we was able to <laughs> ride over that bridge, watch that water, and say, God is good. Yeah. Now, this is the way we have to do in a crisis. We've got
got to get into a position that no crisis can stop us from going forward. It says, in tempests and floods and cyclones and tidal waves and earthquakes, in every place and in a thousand forms, what's happening? Satan, Satan, Satan is exercising his power. And what's he going to do? Bring disease and disaster into populous cities are reduced to what? Ruin, Ruin and, and desolation. The city is not a place to live. Mm -hmm. It says, he sweeps away, come on, Satan, the ripening harvest. Is this happening right now? Yes. And the famine and distress follow. He imparts to the air a deadly taint, and thousands perish by the pestilence. pestilence. This is going on right now. Mm -hmm. It says, these visitations are to become less and less frequent. More and more frequent. Is that what they're saying right now, yes or no? Yes. The worst is yet to come. It says, more and more frequent, and what else? Disaster. In other words, the worst is still coming. Mm -hmm. It says destruction will be upon what? Both man, man and beast. And then, in other words, this is progressive. Once we see the storm, the disaster, the pandemic, the political evil, and then the great deceiver will persuade men that those who serve God are what? Causing the and Eventually, evil. all of the problems are going to be pointed to the hands of seven dead mm -hmm. Those strange group of people who go to church on the wrong day. They're the ones that's calling problems in rich lands. There's the one that's causing problems in Lebanon. They're the one that's causing problems in Virginia, in America. They're the ones that's causing problems in the world. Mm. I'm telling you, this is getting ready to happen. And if you don't know our identity, you know many people will be willing to leave the church at that time. Mm. You know, when, when a political party doesn't seem to be a good party, people start turning cold. Am I right? Oh, yeah. You look right now. Whether Democrat or Republican, many Democrats are becoming Republicans, Republicans becoming what? Democrats. This is in the politics. The same is true of religion. When things don't seem to be going well, it's amazing how we will switch teams. Mm -hmm. Unless we understand the value of our distinctive identity, identity. and say, look, I'm never going to leave this remnant. You better kill me. Amen. Our mission here is too significant. Mm -hmm. And the only way to understand that is to understand our message, our mission. And this is what we're going to get into a little bit later. It says, it will be declared that men are offending God by the violation of the Sunday, Sunday Sabbath, Sabbath, that this sin has brought what? Calamities. What sin? Violation, Violation of Sunday, Sunday Sabbath. Sabbath. That will not cease or stop, stop until Sunday service shall be what? Strictly enforced. So they're saying, look, we will not be able to solve the problems of America and the world until we can get rid of that group that are teaching that the seventh day is the Sabbath. Right. We're going to get rid of them. Mm. And so we've got to first start by enforcing a what? Law. Oh. Now, if I enforce a law, what part of the government has to be made to be coerced into agreeing with this? The legislative branch. Mm -hmm. You knew from political science, you knew from your classes, there are three branches in America. Am I right or wrong? Right. What are the three branches? The executive branch, the judicial branch, and the legislative branch. Three branches of this government that makes up America. Now, the branch that has to do with the passing of law is not, the, uh, it's not just the judicial branch, it's the what? Legislative branch. So something must happen to legislation. Now, I wonder if who sits on the Supreme Court have anything to do with legislation, yes or no? Yes. You better watch this. You better watch this. Now, it says, so a law must be enforced, not for uh, Virginia. There are Sunday laws on the books of Virginia. They're called blue laws. But that's not what this is talking about. The crisis that the Bible speaks of in Revelation 13 is not talking about a blue law that's for one particular state. It's talking about a federal law, a national law that has never existed in America. Never. Mm -hmm. So, in order to get a national law, you can't go to the courts of Alabama. You can't go to the court of Virginia. Where do you have to go to get legislation for the nation? You've got to go to a higher court. Why, what is the higher court, a super court? Well, what's the super court? The Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. In order to make some sense there, you've got to have a seat. And there are only nine seats. And guess oh, what? One. The majority of those seats today are in the hand of Protestants. Mm -hmm. No, sir. No. No. Do you know that today there's not a Protestant on the Supreme Court? Someone said, well, there's one person. That, that man, uh, uh, that name started with a G. If you study long enough into his history, mm. you'll find that he grew up in Kentucky. Right. You know what the, you know the statement says? You give me your child for 12 years. This is what the Catholic is saying. You give me your child for 12 years, and once a Catholic, always oh. a Catholic. You'll think like me if you don't claim to go to my church. 
And the only thing that will take you out of that is you got to come into the remnant church. <laughs> you got to come into the truth. Now, when a, when, when, a, when a true, sincere Catholic comes into the remnant church, he recognizes. And the truth makes him free. Great. But if you don't get the truth, you won't believe the same thing. Mm. Now, we're going to show you. It says that this is leading to the passing of a national Sunday, Sunday law, yeah. and the worst is still yet to come. Not the best, but the what? Worst. worst. Now, is 2020 ordinary year? Yes or no? No. Look at Matthew 24. I want to show you something now. Go to Matthew 24. Go to Matthew 24. I'm going to start in verses, uh, Matthew 24, and we're going to start in verses 3. Matthew 24 and verse 3. Then we'll stop and pray so we can get ready to go deeper into our study. Matthew 24, verse 3. Let's read that together. It says, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him how? Private. Saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Now we're interested in those events that are leading us to the coming of the end. Mm -hmm. yes. So we can understand it tells you. Jesus begins to walk it through. Now we won't go through all of it, but I want to jump up in verse 6. And Brother Smoke, you know the reasons, but I want you to follow a sequence for a moment. Because all these events must take place in this order when we put the order together. Verse 6 says, And ye shall hear of what? Wars and rumors of wars. wars. Have we seen in January when the man that was taken out, the special general from Iran, where it said, we are heading toward World War III. Have we seen that? Mm -hmm. It said wars and rumors of wars. What else? It goes on to say, See, see that you be not, be not troubled. troubled. Why? For, for all these all things must come to pass, but the, the end. In other words, that's not the end. Some more things have to happen. Now, mm -hmm. let's continue. Verse 7. For a nation, nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. kingdom. Political upheaval. We see this. It goes on to say, and there shall be what? Famine. Do we see this, yes or no? Yes. yes. And what else? Famine. Pestilence. Do we see this, yes or no? Yes. yes. And what else? Earthquakes. Earthquakes. Well, we found out this is larger than earthquakes. Does it include the land shaking, yes or no? Yes. It's talking larger than that. What's it talking about? Including, it's talking about what? The environment yeah, devastation. It's talking about the storms that Jesus said. It's, in fact, this word in Matthew is translated tempest. This is a storm. So Jesus is saying there are going to be storms that become more and more frequent and disastrous, just like the prophet said. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. Has that happened, yes or no? Oh, yeah. So if you can say, check, we're right here. Now, question. Once we get here, what should be the next development taking place? Watch now. All these are the beginning. It's not the end. This is just what? The beginning. So we find that 2020 brings us here when you study carefully. But now watch. What's the very next thing that we should be watching for its development after it continues to get worse and worse? Mm. Verse 9. Then, then shall they, they deliver you up to be afflicted, afflicted and shall kill you. kill you. So in other words, what time comes immediately after the environmental devastations and it picks up more and more? What comes next? Persecution. So then in 2020, if we see that, what is right around the corner in 2020? Persecution. This is what's coming. The time is coming that they shall kill you and think they're doing God's service, Jesus said. Now watch. It says, you shall be hated with how many nations? All nations. Now I want to ask you a question. Why do you think that it says that right after verse 8. That you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Now what, you, what was the last thing that happened in verse 7? What was the last thing that happened? First we saw it from verses 7. And, and, and that the storms put up. And then all is the beginning. Then it says, then shall they deliver you up. I wonder if there's any connection between them wanting to kill you and the storms that took place. Oh, yes. yes. Now remember uh, Jonah in the Bible? Yes. What, what came across the sea? What came in, in the sea? A storm. A storm. What eventually they had to do in order to get rid of the storm? Throw him out. They said, look, if we got to get rid of him, we're going to stop this storm. Mm -hmm. Is it possible that we will be hated in the nation because the worldwide climate change, environmental devastation will be appeared as if we caused it? Mm -hmm. Isn't that what the prophet said? Mm -hmm. yes. They were the Bible there's another little piece to that that I can't give you this morning. We'll study that another time. But that goes on and says, you should be hated of all based on my name's sake. Now, that tells me then that the persecution comes right after the picking up of these storms and so forth. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. I wonder what happened with the judge. Has anything to do with this? Mm -hmm. Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Your Supreme Court judge dies of cancer aged 80. September 2020. 
Our nation has lost a, ju a jurist of historic stature. We at the Supreme Court have lost a cherished colleague. Today we mourn, but with confidence that future generations will remember Ruth Bader Ginsburg as we knew her, a tireless and resolute champion of justice, second woman ever seen the Supreme Court, a Jew, a Jew, first Jew as they've seen this happen this way. Now watch what this is. As one of the four liberal justices on the court, her health was watched out. You know that right now people are expressing sorrow, but many people were actually waiting for her to go down. Because what type of judge was she? Liberal. She swung from the conservative to the liberal. And as it became a liberal, then the decisions she was making were, guess what? Liberal. Aww. But right now today, the party that is wanting to take control, both Democrat and Republican, but right now the Republicans that are in party, can, in the minority, uh, majority right now, they want to make sure that not a liberal gets on, they want a what to get on? Conservative. <laughs> now, which mind would pass a Sunday law? A liberal mind or a conservative mind? Conservative. We're going to find out both. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yes. We're going to find out both, but not first. The liberal would have to be brought to a crisis before we'd be willing to do it. Oh. Right now, they liberal give up any, I hate to go for everything, everything, anything goes, until he gets into so much trouble that he says, you know what, I've had enough. He go back to France. You know, in France, they threw God out until the revolution got so bad. You know what they say? We can't do it without God. Even if you didn't believe God, please bring God back in. Because look, we, we're in trouble. You know, even an atheist will ask for God to tell when he gets in trouble. Mm -hmm. You know? That in fact, there was a man in, in, in uh, California. He was an atheist. He was taking a picture. I remember we were at the top of the mountain during a meeting. But at, in the midst of the meeting, we had went to this uh, particular site. And at the top of the mountain, we're uh, back in mountain, mountain, Mount Helena. 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 And he was at the top of the mountain. And he was the, 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 the volcano blue. And the man was taking a picture. So, uh, 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 no atheist. And all of a sudden, he's watching the, the lava, and they got the recording at the top. You can look at it. And they got the, and they're watching it, and it replays over and over again. And he's watching it. His camera's rolling. And all of a sudden, he doesn't recognize that the lava surrounds him. Oh, dear. And he wasn't watching close enough. So he's watching this way, this way, this way. And then he turns around and recognizes he is totally surrounded. And his little piece of patch of land, Brother Bill, is getting smaller and smaller. Mm. Mm. One of the last words he says on the... Clip. Oh God. Oh God. There's no way this on the fox hole. No way this on the fox hole. <laughs> that came right there. Right there. And the tape goes off. You know why? That was it. Yeah. That was it. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Very soon, everybody's going to go toward God. There will be no atheists when the same laws pass. No atheists. Mm. All gone. The king of the south, gone. Now, but it says, as we go here, it says, as one of the four liberals, their health, their health, her health was much closer. Ginsburg's death raised the prospect of Republican U.S. President Donald Trump trying to expand the court's what? Slim. Slim conservative majority. Even before his November's election. Now, he said he's going to announce it today. The one he picks. I, I believe I know who he's going to pick. <laughs> and I told my family, all right. <laughs> and guess what? That's who he picked. He did. And it says... Now, it says, my, fer my most fervent wish is that I will not be replaced mm -hmm. until a new president is what? Installed. This is what Ginsburg said. So if, we're, if, if they want to honor her legacy and respect her decision, what would they do? Wait. But that's not the issue. We're going to see it's much, much more than that. So she said, please, as she was dying, one of her last words, please, 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 wait and let the people decide. Now, it says we have 10 years to say what? Earth. Now, what year is this? 2020. So if we had 10 years, what, what does that tell us? Talk to me sometimes. 2030. So now we're right back at the same equation. I don't care which way or which field of knowledge we turn to, everything says the same thing that 2020 to 2030, we see a development of crisis. If God even allows us to get this long, we see it happening more and more. Mm -hmm. Plus or minus. minus. And it's looking to me, brother, minus. like it's minus. minus. Now, I'm praying. I, in fact, I was praying yesterday, and I said, Lord, please give us a little more time. We're not ready for this. I mean, we're at the beginning of our study, but we're at this thing, I mean, as a church, we're not ready for this. None of us in this room are ready. And we're trying to step-by-step step study so we can understand, because there's some changes, some radical changes that have to be made. Now, I'm not sitting in this seat right here, if we're going to go through this. But by the grace of God, we got to step fast. Are you with me? Yes or no? Yes. So we can see, at the same time, this climate changing and everything's happening. And what is this right here? A skull. 
You know the question is asked? Will climate change cause humans to go what? Extinct. Now, what would it mean for humans to go extinct? What would that mean? That not one person will be left on this earth. Mm -hmm. Now, go to Matthew 24. We're still there. Now, we walked up what's leading to where we are. We see that. But now, watch the very end of this. What's happening? Verse 21. Let's go to verse 21. What does it say in verse 21? For then, For then shall be great tribulation or trouble, such as was not since the beginning of the world. Where? To this time. No, no, ever shall be. In other words, there's nothing like what's getting ready to happen that's, that's taking place, getting ready, that's getting ready to take place. Nothing has ever happened this severe. How severe will it be? Next verse. And except those days should be one shortened, there should, what's the next word? No flesh. Now, what would we call that there were no flesh? What would we call that? Extinction. So if God did not cut the earth short, what would happen to human beings? Extinction. So what does that tell us the earth would look like prior to the end of it, for Jesus coming to bring it to an end, that the earth would appear as if it's getting ready to go what? Extinct. So what are scientists recognizing? They're recognizing we must be at the end. Now, they don't know that's the end. They think it's going to be evolution and another one bangs off again. Another group of people come up for another million years. Ah, it's not like that. There is a limit. Mm -hmm. yeah. They recognize that the end of this, what we call uh, Earth right now, is getting ready to come to an end. But they don't understand. They think it's going to be going over and over again because of their fallacy of believing. But we know from the Bible, this is the beginning of the what? And. Now, my brothers and sisters, that means something. Now, look what this says. I'm going to pass on this right now. I'm going to pass on this right now. We'll come back to this. It says... If civilization continues on this path toward increasing consumption, the global economy will collapse by 2030. Population what? Losses. What what? Ensued. Now, if the world came back down almost to zero, would you call that a population loss? Yes. Um. Population loss. Trump and Biden court Catholic vote in very different ways. Mm -hmm. Trump and Biden court Catholic vote. What does it mean, court Catholic vote? Now, this is the, the language that uh, we used to use in America. We don't use it today. People say they need today. <laughs> but courting, it meant that they are pursuing, in pursuit of find out. Mm -hmm. Now, in God's plan, it's something different. But in the world, courting is two people just uh, pursuing each other. So Trump and Biden court Catholic what? Vote. vote in very different ways. Now, why do they want Catholic vote? That's the That's a Because there's a lot of Catholic vote. It makes them swing voters, as they're called. Now, watch what this says. Mm -hmm. Uh, Lisa Anderson, a lifelong, a lifelong Catholic, does not typically give much weight to religious backgrounds of political candidates. But this other one said, that doesn't bother Nathan Sullivan. Trump has never made mention of his what? Faith. Faith unless it's for political gain. But that doesn't bother Nathan Sullivan. He, let's look what he says. He's, a, he's also an observant Catholic. But he says, he's a person of what? Action. He said, Trump is a man of what? Action. Action. He said, you going to do it? He doesn't. Mm -hmm. He says, Trump in 2016. And we'll do it again. He voted for him and we'll do it again, citing abortion as his most what? Important issue. Now, the particular woman that uh, President Trump uh, uh, selects and selected was a woman who said she will be ready and willing to revisit Roe versus Wade. Mm -hmm. You know what Roe versus Wade is? Mm -hmm. This is what this is about. Now, that means something. I can't go into all that. But it says, I care a lot more about what he does. does. Than what he, he said, look, I'm a Catholic. I care more about the faith, getting in a position done. I don't care what that man is, as long as he does what we want him to do. Mm. You know what this means? I'm going to tell you something. Sunday law is about to be passed, and guess what? We are hearing nothing about it. Mm. Except for this little trick by God's grace. <laughs> We're trying to understand it. That means that there's something to get ready for. This means something. Now watch. Trump attempts a fallout turnaround reclaiming his what? Catholic. He case. does something. He did something. They said, I've got to re-get them back. I've got to get them back. I'm telling you something. This pursuit of putting a judge in tact has more to do with his desire to be reelected than anything else. Mm -hmm. Because he believes something. Mm -hmm. Now, brother, this is, I'm hopefully we'll be able to come back around to this point before we get to an end. Yeah. All of this is telling me that a national seminar is going to be passed and we are not ready. Do we need to get ready? Yes. yes. I want us to intelligently understand this. See, when that seminar passes, it means something. And I want us to understand what it means. means. And 
So by God's grace, we're going to start right here. We're going to pray. And we're going to ask God, Lord, take a little deep. We'll come back and actually see it's what happened. This tells me that Jesus is what? About to come out. Let us pray. Oh, Father in heaven, we are in a grand and awful time. Mm -hmm. We have never been where we are right now, Lord. And as a church, we're not ready, but in your love and mercy, you have sent a message to warn us, to instruct us, to encourage us, to teach us, so that we can get ready before it is too late. And then our time can be used not only in getting ready and getting our families ready, but in reaching and becoming a team to reach the world before it is too late. You are putting together a team, dear God. And we want to be a part of that team. Please help us at this little church to understand what thus said the Lord intelligently so that by your grace, Lord, we can be used to bring you out of that most holy place one time that you may win this great conference. Help us, Lord, as we get ready to study. Remove every distraction and be with our minds. Help us to grasp and understand and share before it is too late. Yes. We thank you, Lord, for we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We want to take our Bibles and go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. We're going to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy, the third chapter. We want to notice what the Bible says there in 2 Timothy. I don't think that any one of us can wonder the time in which we're living in 2020. I don't think we have to wonder. I believe that all of us can see that we're at a time that Bible prophecy points out to be the time of no ordinary experience. This is an ordinary time. Inspiration says we're living not at the beginning of time, but we're living in the last days of this earth's history. The Bible gives us a picture of what the end times should look like. And when you look at the news, you see on the news what end time says should be, which means that current events have become Bible prophecy. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it's no longer prophecy, it is current yes. events. Which means the end is no longer prophecy, but that the end is actually current events. So which means that our news tells us that we're at the end. Yes. And I want us to understand it intelligently. Look at 2 Timothy 3 verse 1. All of the signs point to it, but I want us to understand how it works, the principles from beginning to end. Look at 2 Timothy 3, and when you get there, let me know by saying amen. You're there, amen? Amen. Let's read verse 1. 2 Timothy 3, verse 1, it says this, don't guess, it says this what? No. 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 Also, no. That in the last days, not the first days, but in the what? Last, last days. days. What type of times? Perilous. perilous times shall come. What does perilous time mean? Dangerous. Dangerous. So this is telling us in the last days that perilous times will take place. That's a picture. Mm -hmm. But perilous times are not coming. Guess what? Perilous yeah. times are here. Yeah. You can look at people killing each other. The murders. The, 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 the senseless murders. Off, off the back. If I were to tell you all, you'd be what? That happened? That happened? How can we wonder we're living in the last days? Mm -hmm. I just read the other day of a young boy. He was probably around high school age. His parents made him upset about something they said he couldn't do. They got, he got so upset that he took his gun and shot them at point blank range, father and mother. Oh, then dismembered them, cut their body in pieces, put them in all different places. The, the wall smudged with blood. The carpet smudged with blood. Oh. And then all of a sudden he takes uh, uh, his parents' head. I believe it was his mother. Put it in a pot and boil it as if it was soup. Oh. How can we wonder if we're living in the last days? The Bible says in the last days that perilous times shall come, but it's not coming. It's what? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so this is why, if you look at this, someone says, but, but terrible things have always happened. Terrible things have always happened. But not on this scale. Not in this proportion. Not in this intensity. Not in this frequency. But as we go deeper... We're going to understand how all this means. Now, hopefully, hopefully, I put this back in at the very end, and we'll come back to this, because this means something very <clears throat> significant. In fact, it's leading to persecution. Look what this says. I'm back up. Let it be remembered that it is the boast of Rome that she what? Never, Never changes. changes. You know that there's a papal infallibility. It says that when she writes the law, ex cathedra, or in canon, she cannot err. It says... The principles of Gregory the Seventh and Innocent are still the principles of the Roman Catholic Church, and she, had she but the power, she would put them in practice with as much vigor now as in what? Past as in Protestants little know what they're doing when they propose to accept the aid of Rome 
and the work of Sunday exhortation. While they are bent upon the accomplishment of their purposes, Rome is what? Aiming to reestablish her power to recover her lost supremacy. The deadly wound will be healed. And all the world worn after the beast. Revelation 13, 3. Let the principles once be established in the United States that the church may employ or control the power of the state. What is that? A union of what? Church In other words, let the image of the beast be formed, and it says, and that religious observance may be enforced by secular laws. If you can use morals to enforce laws, if you can use moral conscience, if you can use worship and church and religion to establish laws, in short, that the authority of church and state is to dominate the conscience and the triumph of Rome where? In this country. This country, America, is what? Assured. The moment you see church and state in America, the image of the beast form, know that Rome has already recaptured America. Mm. Mm. Watch it now. Watch it. Watch what it says. God's word has given warning of the what? Impending. What is impending mean? Right up Approach. uh, Approaching, but uh, more of a sense of urgency. Not approaching miles away, but approaching where? Right. right upon you, imminent. Let this be unheeded, the warnings of the Bible, and the Protestant world will learn what the purpose is of what? Rome. Rome. You know that America is supposed to be a Protestant country? It was supposed to have come up, and the pilgrims here, supposedly, that have come here largely to get away from religious persecution from the papacy leading out. And then it says that only, it says the Protestant world will learn the purpose of Rome, they are only when it is what? Too late. Too late to escape their snare. She is silently growing into power. Mm -hmm. Her doctrines, Rome's doctrines, are exerting their influence in legislative halls. What would have to happen? Rome must get taken over the legislative halls. I wonder if she's doing it. Mm -hmm. It says, in the churches and in the hearts of men, she is piling up her lofty and massive structures in the secret recesses of which her former persecutions, persecutions will be repeated. Matthew 24, storms, environment devastation, political upheaval. What happens right after that? Persecution. What do we see happening right after the storms, the pandemic, the famines? We see a new judge coming to the scene. Exerting the influence of Rome and legislative halls, telling us that we're preparing for the return of persecution. persecution. Now, my brothers and sisters, do you think we need to get ready, yes or no? Yes. Now, if that wasn't bad enough, you would think that's the issue. But I'm going to tell you something. There's an issue far more significant than that. And this has to do with Christ in the most holy place. This is the real issue. Jesus is about to come out of that. And what's happening on earth means something. And we need to put it all together to find out how does what's happening here have anything to do with what's going on in heaven. Because if Jesus leaves the most holy place on time... The great controversy is going to be one. And Satan knows this. And everything he's doing in America and with Rome, he's trying to stop Jesus from leaving the most holy place. place. Now, we'll never fully understand that until we get involved, get inside, get deeper into this. I'll come back to this another time. Now, what we're looking at is the first angel's message. The what? First, first angel's message. So we said, they are at a pomegranate. And we told you we have to study several sections before we can understand a bell in the pomegranate. Right. Now, what we're looking at now has to do with the first angel's message in relationship to that bell and the pomegranate. So we're looking at this first angel's message in relationship to that bell and the pomegranate, the first angel's message. Now, let's go a little further. Now, listen. Do you know that there's no other group of people on the earth that understands what Rome really is? Mm -hmm. The Protestants used to believe it. All the Methodists, Methodists, all the Baptists, every one of them said that the Church of Rome was the whore of Revelation 17. Everyone used to believe that. That's why they called themselves Protestants. But all that's lost. 2017, the Protestant Reformation ended 500 years later. Now, as we go back to this, the only group left that understand intelligently what it means is a little group of people called Seventh-day Adventists. But guess what? Of the 22 million of us, we've lost 1844 Jews, and so less than 1% really believe this anymore. Mm -hmm. And we've got to go back later on to find out why that is. Now, when we go into 2 Timothy 3, we find out that unless God has a team that he can use to be prepared for the Sunday law, he would lose. And so he's got to get a church that understands the message their identity, their mission, and this is why we've got to understand our identity today to fulfill the work and the mission that God has given us. Mm -hmm. Because if the work is not finished, Jesus can't leave the most holy place. No. And if he can't leave the most holy place, he doesn't win, he loses. And if he loses, 
He doesn't lose by himself. Guess what? The whole universe is lost. Mm. I want to win. What do you say? Amen. And Jesus is going to win. The question is, will we be a part of this team? In order to be a part of the team, we've got to understand our identity. There's a danger in the ignorance of our past history. history. It says, all genuine experience of religious doctrines will bear the impress of Jehovah. All should see the necessity of what? Understanding. So it's not enough to come to church. We've got to what? Understand. understand. Jesus said, who so read, let him understand. understand. It said, understand the truth for themselves individually. We must understand the doctrines or teachings that have been studied and carefully out carefully and what else? And carefully. carefully. It has been revealed to me that there is among our people, seven heavens, a great lack of knowledge. What you say in one word? How would you call that? Ignorance. 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 In regard to the rise and progress of what message? Talk to me. The, the third, third angel's angel message. message. If there's a third angel, then what comes before the third angel? A second. A second. If there's a second angel, what comes before the second? A first. first. And we're studying the first, first angel's message in the building of the It says there's a great need to search the book of Daniel, Daniel and the book of Revelation. Daniel, would you say that smoky? Did God impress you to get back into those books? Praise God. Of Daniel Revelation. I did the same thing. It says, and learn the text, not casually, but what? Thoroughly. That we may not guess, but know what is written. So what we got to do, we got to take it step by step. Go over the text again and again until we know it in our minds, we understand it in our hearts, and it begins to change how we live every day of our lives. Amen. It's got to make a radical change inside of us. An entire different religious experience. This is Evangelism 363. It goes on. Let's read it. The, the light. light. Let's all read this together. We can. Let's all read this together. It says, The light given to me has been very forcible that many would walk out from us, us. giving heed to seducing spirits and what? Doctrine of Now, what do you think a man lead this church? Seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So then, do we need to understand our identity and what we believe is? Oh, yes. It says, the Lord desires that, that every soul who claims to believe the truth shall have an intelligent knowledge of what is true. That's what I want for us. We didn't say, well, we're seven and a half. We can be any other church. Other church believe in the church, go to church on the seventh day of the Sabbath. So we need to understand intelligently what makes us distinct than any other denomination. What do we believe? Or what should we believe? Now it says we need to understand intelligently. False prophets will arise and do what? Deceive many. many. Everything is to be shaken that can, can be shaken. Then does it not become everyone to what? Understand the reasons of our faith. Why are we seven Adventists? Mm -hmm. In place of having what? So now, many Now this tells you that in order to really understand the message and our identity, we can't have sermons that we eat. Someone says, well, we don't go to church. No, that's not what they say. What did it say? It says, in places from the sermons, there should be a what? More close, More close searching of the word of God. What do we call that? Bible, Bible study. Amen. And this is why we introduce what? B T I. It says, opening the scriptures how? Text by text. And searching, looking. Do you get that text? Do you get, what was that? We're looking together and we're all working together to understand this. Searching for the strong evidences that sustain the fundamental doctrines that have brought us where we now are upon the platform of eternal truth. That's what we have to do today. We want to understand this today. Now, in order to do that, we've got to understand our what? Identity. We can't fulfill our mission unless we understand our identity. But in order to understand our identity, we've got to know who we are. In order to know who we are, we've got to go back to our origin. In order to go to our origin, we have to learn our history. And when you get to our history, you got to our roots. And the devil wants to destroy this church so that Jesus can't leave the most holy place or come out on time. Let the axe be laid to the root. He wants to destroy where we came from. Mm -hmm. For those who came in late. Now, let me ask you a question. This is a test. The Bible has in it over 31,000 texts. 30, over 31,000 texts in the Bible. From Genesis to Revelation in the King James Version. I don't know about every other version, the King James Version. <laughs> Over 31,000 texts. Question. Of those texts, if you had only one, what text would be the root of the origin of the history or the identity of the Adventist faith, of the Adventist church? 
if you only have one text, someone says, the seventh day is the Sabbath. No. No. What text? Daniel 8, 14. Now, those who said that, I say you have been reviewing your notes. Praise the Lord. Now, watch. Now, let's go to Daniel 14. Let's go there. Quickly. Go to Daniel 14. Let's go to Daniel 14. Let's read it first. Before we go to the screen, let's read it from the scripture. What does it say? Daniel 8, chapter. Let's pick up in Daniel 8. Verse 14. What does it say in Daniel 8, verse 14? Verse 14 says, all together. And he said unto me, unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Now somebody would say, what does that have to do with Adventists or Seventh-day Adventists? But keep that in your mind. Great Controversy 4 9. Let's read this together. This is the opening paragraph in the chapter, uh, in the chapter, what is the sanctuary of Great Congress? Let's read this together. 4 9. It says, the, the scriptures, scriptures, which above, how many? All so that means all the scriptures of Genesis Revelation. These scriptures, which above all others, have been both the foundation. foundation. That means everything is supported on this. Everything we believe. And the central pillar, that's what holds up a tent. Mm -hmm. If you take out the central pillar of a tent, even if you have all the other tents on the outside, what's going to happen to the tent? It's coming down. Mm -hmm. If you take this out, no Adventist prayer. It says, it's the foundation and central pillar of the Advent faith was the declaration until 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. cleansed. These have been familiar words, not to some believers, but to what? All, all believers. believers. In the Lord's Even the children understood. Mm -hmm. Six and eight, they understood. Thirteen and fifteen. By the lips of thousands was this prophecy repeated as the watchword of their faith. All felt that upon the events therein foretold depended their what? Brightest expectations and most cherished hopes. It was their great prophecy. The greatest. The most wonderful of all the prophecies. And as they looked at this, they said, upon this shows us the coming of Jesus Christ. The advent of the Lord. Now, my question is, how in the world could Daniel 8.14 make a man believe that Jesus was coming? Is that a good question? Yes. Is that a good question? Yes. Something happened in history based upon this text of Daniel 14. And it's historical. Not just for a seven minutes. All of America felt it. Everywhere in America and around the world, they felt it. Because that first angel had to go to the entire world. Everybody felt it. And it was known in history called what? Talk to me. The Great Disappointment. How many have heard of the Great Disappointment? Let me see your hands. Tell me something that you know about it. Tell me something that you heard about the Great Disappointment. Anything. Tell me something that you heard about it or that you know about it. Anything. I saw all the hands go up so everybody can say something. They had pinpointed the date that Jesus would be So they had pinpointed the didn't come. They were disappointed because they were looking for the coming of the Lord. That's exactly right. Yes. Somebody give me some more. Somebody, anything else? The Lord needs Brother Willard to help lead. Brother Willard? Brother Willie Miller? Okay, he used Brother Willard. So come and make sure. <laughs> and I, I didn't know William, but he used Brother William Miller to do what? To help lead out in the movement. To help lead out in the Advent movement, and so people call it the Millerite movement. But I want to let you know, never call it the Millerite movement. It was not the Millerite movement. Miller never called it that, and none of the people of, uh, uh, in the Adventists call it that. They call it the Advent movement, mm -hmm. because Miller was a man. That movement did not start by a man. It started by God. It was actually used to try to denote, it was supposed to be a, 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 a derogatory word to people who believe in this message. Oh, you're just one of those Millerites. Oh. But they were Adventists. Adventists means what? Coming. Coming. And some of them were made up of Catholics and Baptists and Methodists. And uh, Miller was a Baptist. But as they studied the Bibles, they saw many of what they used to believe wasn't in the Bible. They accepted the faith of the Bible and they began, the religion of the Bible began to let them believe other things with their church time. They accepted that religion. Anything else about the uh, disappointment? All right. You said when Miller let out, very good. Anything else? Come on, give me a little more. Give me a little more. Any? It was all over the world, too. It was all over the world. It impacted the world. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. South America and All over the world. It, and, and it reached its climax what day? October 22nd. 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, I'm telling you, this is history. This is 1844 Jews. This appeared in the paper. They had a picture. Me and Brother Bill was talking about this last Saturday. How when those disappointment took place, the people laughed at them. Can you imagine how it would have felt like? That you went all over the world, you were certain Jesus is coming. 1844, based on Daniel and Revelation, he's coming. He's coming. He's coming. No shot of a doubt. They sold their farms. They gave up everything they had. They didn't collect food. Can you imagine? They had nothing. 
They gave it all to God. And here in the newspaper, they didn't, now October 23rd, the newspapers didn't do this. They were still afraid. Yes. They said, where did they walk? By a few hours. <laughs> mm -hmm. October 25th, they didn't do that. But a few days later, their courage came back and they started making jokes about it in the paper and they started having the devil hold back a man. Oh, you're trying to get up there and you're not going nowhere. He said, the, 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 the tent going up in the air, that big tent that was known for Adventism. The, big tent, the, the building was so small, there were so many people coming from all over that the building weren't big enough, so they had to get what was called the big tent, the Adventist big tent, which carried and hold thousands. It was packed. It, at the White House, they talked about it. In America, all the different poets talked about it. You can go through history and see it. They had songs about it. Even to the day that stars fell in Alabama, that there was a famous song from the 1833 showers that he preached about based on the prophecies. All over the world. And then, a great disappointment. That group that impacted the world, that was in tens of thousands, do you know that in just one day reduced to what you can count in your hands? Mm -hmm. It was a great shame because everybody didn't know what they believed. Mm -hmm. And many gave up their faith. So you and I need to understand for a fact what we believe. Here's him preaching. Back behind him, I can see it right now. This chart, you're not seeing this thing. Yeah. This chart behind him, he's walking down the cross. <laughs> he's going through that. And Revelation, that finger, that, that's that Adventist. When, you, when the Adventist puts that finger up, you know you're in trouble. It's over. That, that, that Advent finger. Right there. He's going from the scriptures. Look at their faces. The children, the adults, everybody was stunned. They were just focused. They couldn't believe. They were looking forward to what the prophecy said. Now, this is the encyclopedia. Watch what the encyclopedia says about you. Watch what it says. Let's read it together. The great disappointment in the Millerite movement. Now, when you know your identity, what's the first thing you say? That's, That's wrong. wrong. That's wrong. You need to know what's in your history and what's not in your history. You need to know what's true and what's false. What they say, oh, it's Miller in your history. Oh, yeah, there was a man named Miller, but we were not Millerites. We're Adventists. Mm -hmm. Now, it says, and the Millerite movement was the reaction that followed what? Back to Scripture, William Miller's proclamation that Jesus Christ will return to the earth by what? 1844. 1844. What he called the Advent. Advent. Not what he called. What he the word Advent. Is Latin, it means coming. Right. That's not what he called it, that's what it is. Yes. It says, his study of the Daniel 8 prophecy during the what? Second, second Great Awakening. Now, that is awakening. another historical name that you want to become familiar with. The Second Great Awakening swept through all of America in the 1830s. Mm -hmm. The entire world, uh, 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 North America went through this. And it was a, a return. Now, that was prophetic because Daniel said that knowledge will increase based on his book. And it will come after 1798. This is what that brought the great second awakening, uh, the second great awakening. And it went through every denomination. God was trying to get the entire world ready to accept his first angel's message. It says, led to the conclusion that Daniel's cleansing of the sanctuary was the cleansing of the world. world. Why? Because they thought, based just like every other person, the Catholic and every other denomination taught that the sanctuary represented the earth, earth or some portion of it. So then the cleansing of the sanctuary would be the cleansing of the earth by the fires of the last day. Hence, the conclusion that the end of this would bring the end of the world by the fires of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Will fires bring the second coming? Uh, will fires of the second coming bring the world to an end? Yes or no? Oh, yes. yes. And if they thought that that's what this was, that's what they concluded. So we have to understand this. Now it says... Uh, the world from sin, uh, it says, was cleansing the world. It says, the cleansing of the sanctuary was, was to them the cleansing of the world from sin when Christ would come, and he and many others prepared. But October 22nd, 1844 came, and they were disappointed. disappointed. These events paved the way for the Adventists, Adventists who formed the Seventh day Adventist, Adventist Church. Church. Amen. That means we need to understand this identity, this history. Yeah. It says, they contended that, that what had happened on October 22nd was not Jesus' return to the earth as Miller had taught, thought, but that the start of Jesus is what talked to me yeah, in Psychopedia of his final work of atonement, the cleansing in the heavenly, heavenly sanctuary, sanctuary leading up to the second coming. Now, the Psychopedia doesn't believe that. They're just giving you an account oh. of what it is said that was added in the Psychopedia. Right, yes. What we have to do is go back and make sure the Bible <laughs> teaches that. Here's it now. I give you a front of view. You know, when you see that right thing, you saw this side view, now you're getting a front of view. Same chart. Seriously. On them looking with expectation. Upturned heads, inspiration says. In other words, upturned is when someone person is not interested. Like that. Mm -hmm. But an upturned head means that they're focused. Mm -hmm. What does a bird do when he's hungry? The little birds, you ever seen a little bird in the, in the nest? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do they do? They put that little mouth up. 
Open. Their mouth not closed. Their mouth closed. Open. Open. Their mouth is how? Open. You know that that's how it should be when God is teaching us. We should have our mouths open, our spiritual uh, 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 minds open to receive every bit of food that God gives us. Now, this was that great disappointment. I told you what I said. This a magazine, famous magazine called Christianity Today. Now, that is a very famous magazine. It means something. I can't go into that right now, but later on we'll get into that. Christianity Today was the premier magazine in the 1950s of, of, of Protestants. American Adventism, the great disappointment. In recent years, we have almost come to expect the well-publicized reports from Bible, Belt text. In other words, he's saying people now all the time coming up saying words are coming in. Nobody believes it anymore. Mm -hmm. But back then, it was not so. Mm -hmm. It says the prophetic doom was no bug-eyed fanatic. He was a square-jawed, honest, church-going farmer named what? William Miller. <clears throat> now, all right, and another question, another question. Very good. Thank you, my brother. Another question. Okay. All right. Maybe Ready to go for it? <laughs> another one I have. Okay. All right. As you say, you're trying, you're trying to be patient. <laughs> early, early back, you talked about the population being 7 billion at Noah's time. And seven billion now. At the flood, out of seven billion people, <coughs> how many was on the boat? Eight. Eight. So that's six billion nine hundred ninety-nine million nine hundred ninety-nine thousand nine hundred ninety-two people. Got drunk. Is it possible? Right now, we've been preaching this message how long? One hundred and twenty years. Oh, one hundred seventy-five. Seventy-five yes. years. Does the whole world know it? No. no. Are there people out there that if Jesus came today would be saved? Right, yes. 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 That don't know it. Yes, yes. He winks at ignorance. That's right. Did Noah's message go to all 7 billion people? Could there possibly have been some out there that didn't hear the call to come into the boat that still loved God? Uh, no, not possible. And the reason why is because Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. So it sets up a parallel between Noah's day and the second coming of Christ. So the question will be, at the second coming of Christ, will everybody have a chance to hear, or will it only be a small portion? Let's go to Matthew 24. And that will take us into our step. Let's go to Matthew 24. Go to Matthew 24. This is a very good question. I'm, I'm thankful that you asked that question. I mean, that leads us right to our study here. In Matthew 24, verse 3, it says, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came into him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of not the beginning, but of the end of the world. Remember, we're trying to understand how do they get sanctuary, judgment, end of the world. Now, go to verse 14. Let's jump down to verse 14. There's something that happens before the end. Look at verse 14. This is the same chapter that Jesus says, as it was in the days of Noah, so I shall also be in the coming of the Son of Man. Verse 14. How was it in the coming of the Son of Man? Because that's how it was in the days of Noah. In Matthew 24, verse 14, let's read that. Uh, in fact, Brother Smokey, would you read that for us, please? Verse 14, please. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the How much of the world? Oh. So if that's how it's going to be before the Lord's coming, then in type, that's how it happened in the days of Noah. Yeah. If it's as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be. All right, let's continue. For a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So that tells me that the end cannot come until the gospel goes how long? To oh. how much of the world? Oh. Is the Bible clear? Yes. yes. All right. So now let me ask you a question. What type of gospel... Would this be? Because the Bible says, now we're going to look at the end. Before the end, the gospel must go to the world. Mm -hmm. So what type of gospel uh, must this be and, uh, that Jesus is talking about? He says, and this, gospel. what does this mean? Gospel. This gospel. Is that a gospel? Specific. This one. What does this specific. mean? Specific. That's a definite article. And this gospel shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end. Mm -hmm. So if it's a gospel before the end, it would have to be an end time what? End time gospel. An end time gospel. So the Bible tells me that before the world can come to an end, there will be an end time gospel that goes to every nation, mm -hmm. that goes to all the parts of the world. Am I right or wrong? Right. Why must it go to all the world as a witness? witness. What if someone says, well, I didn't know about the gospel, so you can't call me to be lost? God's going to say, oh, no. There is a witness. You heard it. You had an opportunity to hear it. And the only reason why you're not saved is because you did not accept the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is the power of God unto salvation. And so we can see that it must go to the entire world as a witness before the end can come. Now, Jesus says in verse 20, uh, 37, 37, but as the days of Noah were, 
so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now question.